On this episode, rebuild the Challenger fuselage. It's fixed and lighter than ever. You guys think? Yeah, kind of chintzy. I mean, it's only 80 pounds. Not that impressive. Do it. You come here. You come here. I don't know. Still not very impressive. I mean, you're a pretty strong guy. Wait, okay. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. On this video, we rebuild the Challenger. It's lighter than ever. Yahoo! Up to 600 volts. It's live! Alright, so uh, it's been a, a way overdue for giving an update. So, um, short summary is, um, you'll see in this video a lot of uh, drilling, grinding, Cutting, welding, and uh, riveting, but uh, uh, and, and some fire too. But, uh, finally, got to the point where I've uh, got the uh, Challenger fuselage and actually the, the Challenger structure in general uh, to a place that I'm uh, satisfied with. I'm not going to say good as new, but uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, good enough. Um, start at the front. Uh, we place these down tubes here. Uh, as well as these, this tube, and this tube, all those ones you saw, all those aluminum termites, pretty much the whole front end got replaced. Um, redid the nose landing gear, as well as the cross, uh, the cross tube here, um, with a doubler to reinforce the termites that were on this launcher on there. Uh, moving farther back, um, the, uh, didn't have to do much here. This actually checked out. Had to uh, do some repair work in here for loose rivets, and in some cases had to go to oversized rivets. Uh, replaced several down tubes, and then also uh, these ones being the, the biggest ones. So took all this apart, uh, and then riveted new uh, uh, new down tubes. All that I got directly from uh, Quad City, uh, the, the the manufacturer, and. Uh, um, then the big one that uh, took quite a bit of time was the uh, landing gear weldment on this side, cut that off. I uh, welded in a new trunnion for that, uh, upgraded to the uh, fiberglass landing gear, got that from U-Fly It, along with disc brakes, new weldments, and some new tires, and the single piece um, aluminum rims, which are significantly lighter than the split rims that I took off of it. All in all, uh, I've got, like I say, I've got the uh, airplane back to as good as new, uh, but at least good enough. Um, put my uh, uh, FAA hat on, not that I have one, and looked over everything, and uh, uh, I've got a few other things I need to still fix out. I've got some, just some grade 8 hardware here that uh, I'm going to have to swap out for AN bolts, um, but the bulk of the uh, structural pair is all complete. That, that, uh, the nice thing too is by switching out the gear, taking out a, a few things that I don't need, I've shaved more than 10 pounds off the weight of this fuselage, and, uh, and so that's got this down. So this weighs, uh, as you see it here, uh, about uh, was it 83, 84 pounds, um, and that's with the wheels, tires, and brakes installed. So anyway, uh, apologize for the uh, long time between updates. Uh, work's been pretty crazy with 12 plus hours working into the wee hours in the morning. Uh, didn't get a lot of time for shooting and editing video. Um, uh, and also, I also misplaced a memory card somewhere. It'll probably turn out just after I, turn up just after I publish this. But uh, um, yeah, so this video I'll be walking through, showing how I did uh, all of these repairs, throwing up a few tips, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. GoPro, stop.
All right, here's that uh, damaged trunnion here. Um, you can see in the video, but it's actually buckled up. Uh, this gusset's buckled out on this side. It's cracked on this side. The whole tube's bent over. It's actually pushed in a little bit here. So I'm going to replace this tube and regusset it. So I'm going to cut this off, and I'll cut it off down here. And be careful not to uh, overheat the tube. Um, this is aluminum. If you get it too hot, you'll just anneal it and destroy a lot of the strength. I'm going to cut it a fair bit out, and then... Uh, in uh, shortcuts and then a reasonable distance off and then I'm just going to grind it the rest of the way. Debating, you know what, the old expression, when you have a hammer everything looks like a nail. Well, I'm falling into that trap, hold on. All right, I love the plasma. I use it all the time. Um, but really, Sawzall is probably a better choice here. I'll get a straighter, cleaner cut. Not that it's really important. I'm going to grind it off, but then I also don't have to worry about overheating. So let's try this. So I hit it with a wire brush, looked over everything. I want to make sure that there's no cracks. Uh, that I need to keep grinding out. I'm going to grind this back farther flush so I'm not welding on top of a weld. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to end up filling that in there. Yep, they definitely double drilled that hole. This side was fine. So to fix the uh, rake on the gear, I think they just rotated it and drilled the hole. Jeez. All right, this is the uh, thing that always ends up taking a lot longer than you expect. So I got off the old one, and the last time it takes me to cut off the old one and get it prepped ready, uh, I'm gonna, it's going to have to order the, you know, order the replacement tube. This is uh, inch and half ID and 058 wall. Um, it is seamless, so DOM, drawn over mandrel. That way it doesn't have the weld bead like on the really cheap tube that you buy. Um, I don't know exactly what steel this is, but um, I have full confidence that 4130 is more than sufficient. So, go to Wix. There is a great resource. And sure enough, they have in stock uh, 1.5009, so I actually have a little bit of clearance to fit in there. 1.58 and there's the exact wall thickness I need. They have it in stock. Six dollars, all I need is one foot, that's their lowest uh, length. And I'll probably spend more than that in shipping, but it'll be done. So, I have fabricated my replacement weldment. Now, before I put that on, I'll show you this. This is the old gear you've seen before. Placing it with a fiberglass gear. Just weight it and just on the mains it uh, saves uh, one pound per side, so two pounds total. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about these being significantly more durable. Uh, the big things I got this is part of the uh, kit from you fly it and also upgraded to uh, hydraulic brakes and I've compared the weights uh, I measured my weights my setup and compared it to theirs uh, the weight they gave me and it's about 10 pounds off the airplane that being prepped I was I moved my attention to actually welding in the replacement tube using the inclinometer and measuring off the other side um, I align the tube since I didn't have particular dimensions to go off of, but the other side appeared undamaged, so I used that as a starting point. Uh, I always leave an inclinometer stuck on the fuselage and um, zero that, that way in case you bump anything, that you still have a good reference. So that's actually clamped on there very rigidly. And since uh, your standard magnetic L-clamp won't work on aluminum, I used got a little assistance from a bungee cord to help hold it all in place. And of course, with something like this, you measure it, you measure it again, 
you measure it again, and you measure it again. So you want to make sure that's right before you're ready to start welding. And of course, after you tack it, and after the first set of welds, you want to measure again and again, because as you tack and weld, things tend to move around. But that'll do. I think everything was tacked and set. I rolled the fuselage over so I could get better access for the welds. And um, I keep putting my hands on the tubes because I want to make sure that I'm not overheating the tube. Um, I've, uh, the welding of the uh, steel on top is uh, potentially annealing the tube underneath. So periodically I just put my hand on it and uh, do a series of full penetration stitch welds. Of course, that's when you get into a project like this that you go to find out that you're out of welding wire and have to reload. And of course it's the weekend and every place is closed, so you're pretty much done for the day. Get some more wire, get it cleaned up, and uh, finish up the welding. The last bit is putting in the uh, long gusset that goes in the bottom. This is the same tube that's used for the trunnion. I just uh, cut it into a strip and then uh, welded it in. All right, just got my box from Quad Cities. Hopefully it has parts I need in it. Don't know why I'm recording unboxing some airplane parts, but then again, I don't know why people watch do unboxing videos anyway. Hey, okay. manual. And it is. And some plates. The plates are right here. Yeah. Place all the front tubes here. These are the uh, ones that were attacked by those termites. So I'm replacing the down tubes, these tubes, as well as the cross tube. A bunch of people uh, have asked, wouldn't it have been easier to uh, just buy a new fuselage? Well, yes, it would have been easier. It would also have been about three thousand um, dollars. I estimate I have about. 10 to 20 hours into uh, fixing this, and uh, probably about two or three hundred dollars in parts just to, just to replace the base fuselage. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not doing this for practical purposes, though. I is this is fun, so you do it. For the instrument panel, I'm having a lot simpler arrangement since I don't have all the uh, instruments for a two-stroke motor. I'm making something simpler, just making up my own bracket. So I lay out a cardboard template, uh, the shape that I want, and then just hand cut it out on the plasma. Um, the plasma leaves a lot of dross, and so I have to clean it up using the belt sander. And uh, once I got all that set, then it's just a matter of uh, drilling out all the holes that I had laid out previously and then going through obviously clicking as I'm going through. Uh, once I got it all drilled out then it's a matter of taking all apart and then deburring all of the holes. Uh, once I got the holes deburred then I just go through and clico and rivet and then it's done. So I'm going to uh, install these. These are a uh, quarter inch these are Huck Magnalox. Uh, they're a really nice rivet. This is completely and totally overkill for this. Uh, I just happen to have these around um, left over from a project I worked years ago. It and the uh, the rivet gun. I mean the rivet gun is probably worth as much as this fuselage is. But anyway, I have it and so I'm going to use it a quarter inch. Uh, tight on edge distance, tighter than I'd like, but not really worried about it with the other things I've done. And uh, these this particular rivet I mean, you could probably, you know, hang the whole, well, thousands of pounds can go through this one rivet, so not really worried about it. I 
I'm not worried about this tearing out. If I were putting a large load in this direction, then I'd be worried about tearing out on that end. But there's essentially zero load in that direction. All of it is prying load this way, which is wanting to bend this bracket and pull the rivets out. So, so now that's fixed. So I got the uh, doubler on that side, and then uh, <clears throat> this side wasn't nearly as buggered up, so I just oversized the uh, holes to the quarter inch. Um, you see these extra holes here? That's actually normally there's the, um, the stringer that goes down below. And this guy actually attaches right there. Um, I fixed it on the other side, but this will be plenty strong. In this spot, I shot a bunch of video, and unfortunately I can't find the memory card, but um, I put a, a doubler because there were a series of holes in here. Uh, that were snowmanned and double drilled and weight too close edge distance. So this is just the same tube here, split it, and then uh, drill them. I actually used some of the existing holes to go around the uh, snowman holes. Uh, the right way to do that is with a strap duplicator or a hole transfer, depending on who, you, what, uh, uh, who you're talking to. This is number 30. Uh, hard on a, it's harder on a round surface like this because you've actually got to get in there and fit it in. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, I shot a video on how to do this. Uh All right. <clears throat> so to see, it, I've uh, replaced this forward tube. Took out the uh, round tube that was there. A um, couple reasons for it. I really wanted to be able to clamp up tighter on here. Um, I think that's part of the, this is a not an uncommon failure. I've seen some videos of other pilots finding it on their pre-flight. Uh, they're just getting cracks that form across here, and this whole thing loosens up. Um, it's kind of the, what happens, depending on loads, on when you have a flat tube on a, uh, or sorry, round tube on flat stock, and it's just having to bend. So these, especially when it loosens up, then these little, uh, um, it's like 060 or 080, I think it's 060, um, it's just having to react that and bending, and it just doesn't end up working out. Not to mention the fact that some person that shall go unnamed did that to it. So anyway, got rid of that. The other thing I found, like I said the this was really boogered up, and obviously this round tube was on there, and uh, there go. it obviously had been broken off and sort of welded back on. Um, but this is the preferable square tube round hole. So, um, part of the reason I've actually, uh, while I'm, since I'm replacing this tube anyway, uh, with round, I had this um, aluminum tube just sitting around. This is a, a same wall. I think it's 120 wall. Um, 61, I think it's T651 extrusion. Just happened to have it laying around. And it allowed me to do a bolted connection here. Um, I mean, the old connection, took it out before I took a video, but was this would go against the round tube and then pipe clamped in place. Um, honestly, it's I wouldn't have a problem with it if it wasn't the rest of the stuff hadn't already been damaged. But uh, since I'm having to replace it anyway, might as well replace it to um, what I want to do. I'm still going to keep the pipe clamps for the upper connection, but uh, um, yeah, yeah. This guy will attach in a very similar fashion, like that, and I will weld all that in. So, and I'll bolt up, actually probably bolt across through here, um, and uh, yeah, that will serve the same function. I won't have the pipe clamps, I'll have the stronger the square tube with the Nice connection. I'm still going to put some doublers here to so that that bending isn't reacted right here at the end of this washer. That there will be a doubler that'll take it. I mean, I'd like to run it out all the way to there, but we'll see. So I fit in the new pieces. Obviously, measure over and over to make sure it's square and centered. Um, I also went through and put in a series of uh, little gussets to um, strengthen up that piece so that. 
it wasn't just relying on that weld uh, between the tube and the cross. And you can see me putting those in right here. I use these little neodymium magnets. Very strong, but they cannot get hot. Very important. Once I got everything all tacked into place on the plane and uh, checked to make sure it was all straight, pulled it off and then took it over to the workbench where I could burn the rest of it in. And obviously it's much easier to do that than on the airplane. After I got everything all burned in, we uh, cut off the extra material from the bracket a coat of paint. to uh, lighten it up and drilled the holes for the mounting. Then yeah. another quick test fit, make sure it's good, and follow that up with a uh, quick coat of paint. Make sure to mask off the bearing races since uh, having paint in your bearings isn't going to do it any favors. And it's just a matter of close tolerance, heart fit. I mean, this is the axle that comes with it. it. Can fit on that side. I've cleaned it up. But if I go this other side, I can't get it on there. So it's a few thou too big. I've got this one now, so it slides on. This doesn't go on this side, but just for demonstration. This is the tube that I used, by the way. Oh, that doesn't matter. That's all I'm doing. take off a little material. I put in some uh, spray Teflon in there, so if I ever need to get this gear out, I know I'll be able to. Uh, I want 12 inches from the Longeron to there, which is what I've got. The other thing is I want this Longeron, I want, I want the drill hole to be parallel to the Longeron. Look at that. This is my inclinometer here. Tight fit hole. That's with a quarter degree of that. That is good enough. And always follow the instructions. Even the new axle tube uh, fitting on the brand new uh, fiberglass gear was a very, very tight fit. And I uh, didn't want to risk getting it stuck halfway on uh, or even partially way on. So some more sandpaper to clear it up. All right, now that I've got the uh, weldment all installed, I can work follow the instructions and install the cables for the main landing gear. I then moved on to the wheels, tires, and brakes, and installing those tubeless tires was quite a bit of challenge, even using ratchet straps. Uh, I finally resorted to good old-fashioned fire. Fire is good, so let's see that in slow mo.
with the tire seated onto the rims, I could now move on, continue following the instructions to install them onto the axles and install the disc brake, hydraulic disc brake setup. Um, installation is pretty straightforward, but uh, I would actually build up the wheels, tires, brakes, and hub and axle on a bench as opposed to doing it on the airframe as the instructions recommend. All right. So I got the uh, uh, new discs installed, calipers, uh, new fiberglass gear. Uh, I ordered new hardware, uh, uh, landing gear from uh, uh, from the factory. And uh, I'm going to do the flight controls here next. But uh, one of the things, to follow the instructions, they're OK. Uh, a couple things to add on. I haven't hooked up the lines yet. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, one thing is, it doesn't tell, you want the nipple up top um, because that's you, the whole point of the nipple is that you can bleed the air out of the system, so the air is going to be up top. Uh, this, uh, installation was really simple, straightforward. Um, I have this thing swap side. They don't specify anything in the uh, uh, in the instructions uh, that I remember, but uh, generally it's best to have the caliper behind here for doing any field landings. You, uh, you want to do is actually have your brake lines come behind the landing gear. That way it's protected uh, from, uh, to some extent, from branches and whatnot hitting it. Now I haven't drilled this yet, haven't set my toe in, haven't drilled the gear, so it's really easy. I don't need to take everything apart. Just pull it off. Like so. so the other, brings me to the other thing I was going to mention is, I don't mention the instructions, but you can just assemble this on the bench, you don't have to, and then just slide it on and do your final install there, uh, which is what I'd actually recommend. You can build up the caliper, tighten the bolts, uh, etc. But uh, yeah, just do that on the bench, set your bleeders, etc. Because you can just slide these back and forth. Anyway, see through the dog now. Um, so now, brake lines are on the back side. They're protected by the gear. I'll run them up back through here and then along through the fuselage there. Swap size is done. I still need to set the toe in, but that'll be next. All right, so the last thing I need to do before the airframe is all complete is uh, drill the holes to set the toe in for the, uh, um, for the main gear. So the toe in is, I've got tricycle gear and the toe end is the angle between the center line of these wheels. They recommend doing all this after uh, an instructions, after the uh, wheels are installed. I think I actually do it with the square and uh, do it with the axles, but I already got it installed. So. Um, but anyway, the toe end is I want to get these towed in. Uh, they recommend about a one degree, which uh, seems really reasonable to me. So there's a couple different ways to do it. The way I'm going to do this is sticking my nice six foot level that I've got and on either side square to the wheels using the rim and I measure the distance the distance here and I measure the distance here and for one degree of toe in this is six foot so it's 72 inches um, tension of one degree, so let's see. So I've got this part here. So I need this to come in by this distance total on either side. So tangent of one degree, uh, that's equal to 0 0.017. Um, and then I multiply that by 72, and that gives me an inch and a quarter. Um, so I need these two to be an inch and a quarter closer than those two. Now I also want this to be on center line of the aircraft. So I'm going to pick a center point here, and that means that will set this distance. And I have to go over and actually measure this distance. I don't know what that is yet. But whatever that is, I'm going to come in, I'm going to divide that by 2, so this is x. This will be x divided by 2 from the center line, and minus half inch and a quarter. So that's half the subject. So I just need to uh, measure this, 
and I'll take off an inch and a quarter off of that total, uh, which is, that is 0 0.625, 5 eighths total. Double check my math there. Yep, 5 eighths. Uh, so this will be that minus 5 eighths. And that will be the same on either side. That way I know that my wheels will be aligned with the center line of the aircraft and that uh, I'll have one degree of towing. All right. And this here is the most, but not all, of the pile of parts that I removed. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, next episode, I'll be uh, diving deep into the motor testing. Uh, so if you guys want to see me driving down the highway at 60 miles an hour with an uh, electric motor uh, spinning propeller uh, strapped to the front of my truck, feel free to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos.